Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis with Sephiroth Mineral Systems. I'm in my home office today and I'm doing a quick video on interpretation of the Gravity Recoverable Gold test report. So this is a test that a lot of people uh, may be familiar with, especially if they're familiar with gold operations. Um, operations that have free gold, it's a fairly standard test in the industry uh, to determine the amenability of a gold ore to gravity recovery. And from that test work, a report's generated. So I'm just going to give a overview of what the report looks like, what it contains, and how you can interpret it. So let's get going. So this is the uh, equipment on which the test work's done. This is a Falcon L40. Um, if a lab has a Nelson, they'll use a Nelson MD3. Similar results are, are produced from both of these pieces of equipment. And at Sephiro Labs, we use the Falcon L40. And this is an image from the uh, labs.sephirosystems.com website. So there's a uh, centrifugal bowl inside this. In the L40, it's a four inch bowl. Uh, in the MD3, it's a three inch bowl. Uh, feed comes in, it's concentrated inside, tailings come out, and then the concentrate is recovered in a batch fashion after the test is done. And the test charge for this is typically uh, 10 kilograms. So let's have a look at the report. So here's the cover page, nothing too exciting happening here. So let's keep moving down. Table of contents. Um, quick write up on the background where the, and this is a, this is a sample report. It's based on a, a real report with actual results, but obviously all of the um, identifying information has been removed from it. So we here talk through the methodology. So this is where it starts to get interesting. We'll take the feed sample. Uh, let's keep that in frame here. So we'll take a 10 kilogram sample. It will be screened at 1.3 millimeters. And this is um, just to accommodate, uh, the screen here is just to accommodate the lab equipment. Uh, industrially, the um, commercial units can be fed, you know, we recommend two millimeter uh, just for wear purposes, but you know, four, six, eight millimeter, um, the equipment can certainly take it, but you know, wear starts to get a, a bit out of control as the particle sizes get too large. Um, so here it's screened at 1.3 millimeter. This is the, this represents a gravity concentration step. So one gravity concentration step. Then there's a grinding step to, you know, nominally between 200 and 300 micron. Another gravity concentration step. Another grinding step. This time to, you know, targeting 75 micron. And then a final gravity concentration step. Okay, so first question, why, why three steps? Why two grinds? So there's two reasons for this. Uh, one is because, you know, this does a, a reasonable job of simulating a grinding circuit where you've got a mill, you've got a cyclone, and material is going back and forth and around in this circuit. So it'll be progressively ground finer and finer as it, as it goes around the circuit. The second reason is because it gives you a reasonably, let's just say good, but empirical um, assessment of the gold liberation size. You know, so you have a, a particle, there's a piece of gold on it. Maybe you have another particle and it's got some tiny pieces of gold. So this will give you an indication of, you know, how much may have this coarse gold in it. That's let's just say in the, you know, 150 micron range that'll go to this step, um, you know, and obviously before that, you know, plus 300 micron, and, which, you know, maybe in this size, and then we've got, you know, part much smaller free gold particles. You know, these may be um, 100 micron or smaller, you know, so less than 100 micron that may be recovered in this step. And we'll see in the results how this, how this plays out and we can interpret it. Um, but, you know, short of doing a, you know, a bunch of microscope work, detailed mineralogical assessment, this will give you a, a reasonably good idea of what that, you know, gold, maybe not necessarily gold size distribution, but it'll give you an indication of what the grind size may need to be in broad strokes in order to release 
different percentages of the overall gold um, and be able to recover that gold by gravity. So then we've got a, another thing going on here, and that's panning of the concentrate. So the primary there are two reasons there are two primary reasons for this. One is to determine the upgradeability. So you know, do we have principally free gold particles, you know, which we'll report here, or are we bringing particles along, um, you know, just with the recovered mass that might be going into tailings? So that's one. Hey, can we can we readily upgrade the concentrate because it's primarily free gold particles? The other reason is um, for assay consistency. So the majority of the free gold particles ought to be here. And this will be assayed to extinction. And then we take the tailings and, you know, normally we'll assay the tailings to extinction as well, um, you know, just for completeness. But, you know, it's possible because this should be a more homogeneous screen because a uh, stream or product because all the nuggets should be in the pan con, you know, we could sample this for uh, assay as well. Uh, but typically, you know, it's best practice just to assay everything to extinction. And then we've got the tailings. And because the tailings should be, you know, pretty much devoid of um, nuggets and free gold particles, you know, we can just sample this and then um, assay those samples. And with this method of, you know, splitting out the con, the tailings, or the pan tails, pan con, and the total tailings, uh, we can get a very consistent assay. And we actually have a, you know, a procedure um, that we recommend for, let's just say, like underground production sampling, you know, that involves a gravity concentration step to try to reduce the variability in the, in the ore. That's, you know, a video for another day. Um, but this is a method that can also be used when sampling to reduce um, grade variability if, if it's moving around a lot. We've certainly shown that statistically that... Uh, there can be a strong benefit to doing that. All right. So uh, results and discussion. So this is, um, you know, in the head assay, this is what I was referring to when it comes to, you know, consistency of assays. Uh, and so for me, you know, like this is a, a size fraction assay, which should be pretty consistent, but still, you know, you're sampling and you can run into this nugget issue. But this back calculated head for me is going to be the most consistent. So if somebody's looking for, um, you know, a little bit of qualitative opinion on, hey, you know, we've got three, four, five different assays here. Like, what's the one to believe or what's the, you know, what's expected to be the most representative or accurate? It's going to be, for me, it's going to be, it's certainly going to be this one, um, the GRG calculated head grade. Uh, and it talks about that a little bit in the description. It's likely to result in nugget effect. Um, and, and we like seeing this one. So let's keep going. Okay, so here are the test results. And we'll spend a, spend a bit of time here talking through these guys. So a lot of stuff going on here, but let's break it down uh, test by test. So this is test one. This is test two. This is test three. So one two, three. And just remember we had the pan concentrate and the pan tailings. And then this one is a mathematical combination of the other two. And same thing here, pan con, pan tails, mathematical combination of those ones. And then pan con, pan tails, mathematical combination of those. And here, total L40 concentrate. This one is the mathematical combination of everything, all of those. So let's see what's going on here. So we're feeding in 10 kilograms. And at each stage, you know, we're recovering somewhere. And I mean, this will depend on, um, you know, the, the, weight of the or the sg of the background gang the particle size distribution the sort of stuff but you know we're getting anywhere from let's just say 70 to 110 grams in a test and for this material you know we've had the sort of the 70 to 90 grams range um, which represents 
about you know one percent of the feed mass now this is just a product of the low feed mass um, that we're putting in during the test industrially you know the the mass yield if you want to look at it that way uh, is going to be much 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 less than one percent you know 0.1 percent 0.01 percent depending on how long the machine is run and that's also reflected here in the grades that are produced um, if we ran you know 100 kilos through this machine and got into these 0.1 percent mass yields you'd see a much higher grade that's more representative of what the industrial machines generate so the industrial machines will be generating grades that are a lot closer and more analogous to the pan concentrate where you're in the you know 2,000 grams per ton up to 10,000 grams per ton or something like that so the so I'd say a good thing to look at here if you say hey what's the industrial grade going to be it's going to be a lot closer to this um, pan concentrate that'll be a lot more representative of the grade uh, on the other hand the recoveries will line up pretty well when it comes to the total constant uh, the total at each step um, and this is because you know a, a few different reasons we're having a lot of different passes to recover the free gold particles inside the grinding circuit um, and as we mentioned you know the simulation of the grinding circuit particles are going around and around and around and getting ground finer um, as we mentioned at the as i mentioned at the start of the video we're getting sort of an idea of a gold release curve here where without any grinding we recovered 16 percent with that first stage of grinding to 200 or 300 micron we can expect to recover an additional 30 percent and then the final grind to um, let's say nominally 75 micron we've got another almost 30 percent here so as the grind gets finer more free gold gets released so we're adding this amount and then we're adding this amount for a total overall gravity recovery of 75 percent which is great you know that's extremely good um, you know on the spectrum of zero to you know let's just say low 90s of gravity recoverable gold that we'll see this is a, you know is obviously a, a fantastic candidate for gravity recovery uh, what else do we see here we see a tailings grade of 2.3 based on the head grade of 9.23 um, and you know just something i'll mention and this is more of an industrial consideration is that when we have such high gravity recovery often a lot of this will come in the form of you know larger free gold pieces or nuggets and i mean we see that you know we've got 16 percent here um, that's going to be you know nominally uh, quite coarse uh, and moving down the range so here industrial this is going to be a pretty consistent grade you know so if i'm putting my like process engineering hat on not only do you get a a lower grade to downstream processes be it leaching or flotation or whatever you can also expect this to be a much more consistent grade at this level than it would be um you know because if if the average let's just say you didn't have any gravity recovery and the average was nine this is probably going to be you know quite up and down due to the presence of all this free gold whereas you strip the free gold out and you're going to have a much more consistent two grams per ton to that downstream process so you know in summary you can look at um, the expectation of gravity concentrate grade you know in here probably a bit higher because you're running much higher mass um, relatively speaking through the industrial machines and you know an overall gravity recovery here and if you for whatever reason you know make a decision to go with a much coarser grind you know you can look at this plus this for example or you know some factor in between here if the grind's going to be somewhere in between and then just you know summary and recommendations um yeah grinding's required here's the overall recovery um and a significant amount of gold in the tailings so hey let's let's take a look at downstream processes and further you know you'll get um i'm not showing it here but you get an appendix with all the assay results and the particular results from each gravity step so in in the results here it's a it's a summary but then all the detailed pages will come in the appendix as well so i hope that that was a helpful overview of the grg test report if you have any questions 
comments, interested in learning more, uh, please go to labs.sephrosystems.com. All the contact information's there. Um, lots of smart people uh, working in the uh, in Sephro Labs. So please feel free to get a hold of them uh, to learn more and uh, for any help with anything you need. And thanks so much for watching the video.